In this video, we're going to explore OpenID Connect scopes and how they work in Amazon Cognito. We will focus on the standard attributes defined on the OpenID specification, things like phone, email, birth date, etc., and see how to enable these scopes in Amazon Cognito. We will also see how to retrieve these as claims from your JWT token and use this in your application. Hello, everyone. My name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel where I talk about .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is part of my Amazon Cognito series and thanks to AWS for sponsoring it. OpenID Connect is an identity layer built on top of OAuth 2.0 framework. Now this allows to verify the identity of an end user and obtain basic user profile information. Now, a scope is simply a grouping of claims. Now, in OAuth, a scope is a string that may represent a resource the client requires access to. Claims are not part of the OAuth, but are added as part of the OpenID Connect. In the OpenID specification, we have the default scopes, which has an associated set of claims attached to it. So the email has the email and the email verified claim. The address has the address and profile has a lot of information attached to it as part of claims, which includes the name, family name, phone, birth date, etc. Now, in the earlier videos where we examined the token, we did come across the email and the email verified scope that were there inside our JWT token. However, we didn't have any of the profile information. Now, with Cognito, so if I switch over to my Cognito user pools, I have created two user pools here. Now, if I navigate into one of them, which was the earlier one that we used throughout in this video, when we signed up, when we created the user pool, if you navigate to the sign up, you can see the profile information that we are capturing. So you can see the required attributes and what we were capturing is just the name. Now, there is no way to edit this once you have created a user pool, which means if you want to capture additional properties that are there as part of the required attributes, you will have to create a new user pool for this. So I have gone up and created a new user pool where under the sign up, I have specified a couple more properties that are required. So you can see here, I'm setting up as birth date, locale and name as required properties. Now, when I registered the users for this, I had to specify those properties as well. So if I navigate into a user, I can see these properties that's defined on the user. However, if we navigate to one of the app clients that I have, which is the web app, if we are to log into this account, so let's use the view login page, we can see that the scope is included by default in the URL. So this is asking for the scopes of email, open ID and phone. Now, if you remember, these scopes are the default ones that's specified by OpenID Connect. So you can see the email, open ID and the phone. So only these information will be part of our claims. So if you complete this login, by specifying the username and the password, we will be redirected to get an authorization code, which we can further exchange to get a token. We have covered this in the previous videos in this series. Now inside this token, if I examine the ID token for this, so let's copy that and put this in jwt.io, we can see this will include those claims. So we see the email, the email verified, etc., as claims inside this token. Now, this is because when we logged in, we specified those as the required scopes by default. Now, we cannot get the profile information yet inside this token because we didn't request for it when we logged in. However, if I navigate to the login page and simply add the profile scope here, that is going to throw an error. So in the end, if I was to also say plus profile as part of the scopes, this is going to return an invalid request. Now, the reason for this is we don't have that scope enabled for this application. So if you navigate into the login pages and the app client that you're looking, you can see the allowed OpenID Connect scopes inside here. So we have email, open ID and phone currently enabled. So let's edit this and let's add the required scopes. So we can select the open ID scope and also say we need profile as part of this. And let's click save changes. Now, once the profile is set on the required open ID connect scopes, let's navigate to the login page and let's continue the login. Now in here, you can see as part of the URL, it's automatically including the profile as the requested scope. Now let's complete the login and say sign in as the same user. Let's capture this code again and exchange this for a token. So let's paste this. 
and get send. Now let's copy this ID token again from here and put this in JWT.io. Now in this case, you can see this has more claims that is part of this token. So we see the name, birth date, etc., which is now coming from the profile scope that we included as part of our request. However, if we look at the access token that we get back, this still doesn't have any of that information. All of this information is only contained as part of the ID token. As part of the access token, you can see in the scope, we have the phone, phone open ID, profile and email being returned. Now with OAuth, there is also a user info endpoint that you can hit to get the user details. So this is the same URL against which we get the token. You can use the OAuth to slash user info instead. And you can make a get request by passing the access token as part of the authorization header. So let's replace this with the latest access token and let's make a request again. And this is going to return the user info for that logged in access token. So here you can see all the information about the user, which we have also in the claims as part of the ID token. So let's see how we can integrate this into our API application. So if I switch over to Rider, where I have an existing ASP.NET Core application that is wired up to this AWS Cognito application. Now inside here, we earlier saw how we can add the policy-based checks. And we also saw how the ASP.NET policy-based framework works under the hood based on using requirements and requirement handlers. Now in this case, we have an admin only requirement, which was reading the claim from the token itself. Now here, the Cognito groups was part of the access token, which means I could use it directly from just the token's claims. However, we saw Saw that the new profile information is not by default included as part of the access token, which means we'll have to make an additional call to user info. Let's see how we can implement that. So I'll create a new class to add a requirement for age validation. So since we have the birth date, let's say we need a policy to check that the age is above a certain minimum age required to access this API. So let's add in a new class and let's call this as age requirement. Now I have already written this out and don't want you to be sitting here and watching me and type this out. So I'll copy and paste the requirement class that I already have and I'll walk you through the main parts. So let's copy and paste the code for the requirement and walk through the important steps. So here we have the age requirement class, which is of type I authorization requirement, and it has a minimum age property. Now this also has the age requirement handler. Let's fix this constructor to have the same name. And this implements the authorization handler. We saw the different building blocks in the ASP.NET Core policy based framework in a separate video, which will be linked here and in the descriptions. Now, once we have both the requirement handler and the requirement, we can handle the requirement inside this class. Now, all this does is reads the HTTP context. It gets the birth date by making a call to the user info endpoint. So this also requires the URL that it needs to, which it is getting from the configuration and making a call to the user info. So this is exactly the URL that we used in Postman to get the user info. It will pass on the token that's coming in from the same context. So it grabs that token and passes on that bearer token because it's the exact same token that we need to use. And it tries to return the information from there. Now we also need the Cognito user info, which maps the JSON object from the request response. So let's go and create a class for that. So let's copy this response JSON from the Postman. And you can use the default functionality in Rider to create a class from that. So let's make sure the cursor is in a default space and let's use copy paste special and say paste special JSON as classes. Now this is going to create a class automatically. So we can use this as Cognito user info. So let's rename that and let's simply use that type inside this. So let's remove that specific namespaces and also use the properties that it automatically generated, which is of lowercase. We can go in and fix that if required, but for now, I'll just leave it as lowercase. So this is trying to parse the birth date from this response and then it calculates the age from there. Now, if the age is greater than the minimum age that we have specified as part of the requirement, then this is success. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything and passes it on for a different handler. Now, there are ways we can clean this code up to reuse the IHTTP and the interfaces that we use, but I'll leave that for a separate video. 
So let's now go back into our program.cs and let's add a new policy. So inside here, we have an admin only policy, but we let's also add a configure.add policy and let's specify the policy as over 18, which means there's only over 18 that is going to be allowed. So it requires the authenticated user and it also requires the age requirement. So let's make sure to include the namespace and we are passing in the age 18 as the parameter. So you can see this takes in, in and sets it up on the minimum age, which is then used inside our handler to check that the age is greater than the requirements minimum age. So we have defined this policy which is over 18 only. Now we can use this in our API endpoint. So if I navigate to the map post, instead of the admin only policy, we are going to specify over 18 only policy, which means that is the one that is going to be attached on this post request. So let's build this and see this in action. So let's put a breakpoint in our age requirement handler so that we can see what is happening. So we were using the HTTP file to make the request. So let's switch over to that. Let's make sure that we replace the access token from our clipboard. So let's replace this with the valid access token. Now, before we make a request, let's make sure our variables are correct. So in here, we have the authority token validator, but we also need an additional argument for our age requirement class. So this is looking at JWT bearer user pool domain as a property. So let's copy this and let's create a new variable. So under the JWT bearer, we can specify a user pool domain, which is going to be the URL that we used in our Postman endpoint. So let's copy this URL and let's make sure to paste it inside this. Let's remove the trailing slash. We also need to make sure that the authority is pointing to the latest app URL. So we can either copy and paste from here or we can navigate to jwt.io and copy the issuer URL. So let's copy this and let's make sure to replace the authority. Now, once that is set, let's switch over to our program.cs and let's also make sure that we are registering the age requirement handler. So in this case, since we have defined an age requirement and the handler as separate classes, we need to register that inside the dependency injection. So let's specify this as an I authorization handler like we did for the admin only and let's register age requirement handler. Now in this age requirement, since there are additional properties getting injected into it, let's register this as a transient interface and let's inject that into our DI. Now, since inside our age requirement handler, we are using the HTTP client factory, we also need to register that inside our DI. So let's specify builder.services.addHttp client, which will inject in the HTTP client factory. Now, once we have all of this set up, let's run our application to see this in action. So we have our API endpoint running. So let's go to the HTTP file and let's invoke a post request. Now, in this case, this is going to hit handle requirement method for the age requirement. So let's step through this and see what is happening. So it's getting the HTTP context and it is trying to get the birth date. So if we step further into that method, you can see this is extracting the authorization header and passing this into the user info endpoint. So it uses an HTTP client and it gets this header into that client and hits the endpoint to get the user info. Now, in this case, it is hitting and returning back our information. So we have the birth date, which is 2905. And this checks if the age is greater than the minimum requirement or not. So you can see it is calculating the age and it is checking if it is greater than the minimum requirement, which is 18 in this case. And because that is a success, it is going to mark that as a success on the context. Now we ran into a timeout. So let's go into the HTTP and make a request again and let application run through. And you can see this time it is returning a 200 OK. Now, if you have a user whose age is different, then in this case, this policy will fail because it will not be succeeded inside our requirement handler. The other way to test this is also for the same user. Let's go ahead and change our requirement. So let's say instead of 18, we can change this age to be something else. So let's assume this should be over 40 years only. So let's specify over 40 only and change this as 40. And let's also make sure that we update the policy name to reflect that. So once we change that, let's debug this again and let's use the same token. And in this case, this should fail. 
So our application is running. So let's switch over to the HTTP file, hit the post in this case again, and let's put a breakpoint inside the age check and let's step through. So now the age is 24. However, the minimum age requirement is 40. So since this does not succeed it, you can see here that this returns a 403 forbidden response. Now, one thing that you may note here is that we are having to call the user info endpoint every time we make an API call. Now, this is because the claims are not there as part of our access token by default. Now, in Amazon Cognito, there are ways we can inject in the claims into the token, which we will see in a future video. Once we have that, we don't have to make an additional user info call every time this API endpoint is being hit. If you want to be notified when that video comes out, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.